that's kind of where everybody's at. So we're going to go look at the junior mapper description, okay, which covers a big chunk of you guys, right? Okay, so let's let's look at, at what it is. So for every job description, there's two things on the paper. Okay, there's a written job description and then there's these sheets. So there is a written job description that's kind of like what would go out with an offer letter. Okay, but the two things that are on each job description are knowledge areas and skills. And those are related things but different. Okay, so knowledge area means you have the understanding. Okay, skill means you can actually execute some task based on that knowledge. Okay, so I'm going to pick on Elena for a minute. So Elena probably knows what a total station is. She might even know how it works. Okay, but she, can she set one up and run it? So she, is, she has some ability in the knowledge area, but probably not the skill yet. Right? Okay. All right, so for every knowledge area and skill, there's four boxes labeled one to four. Okay, and that gets back to the conversation we had a few weeks ago about technical competence. There's a reason why there's four boxes and not three and not five. Okay, so one to four is the level of technical competence in either that knowledge area or that skill. Okay, does anybody remember what the levels of technical competence are? What's level one? Basically, not knowing anything. Level one's I gotta hold your hand. Okay, level two? With assistance. Yeah. Is you can do most of it, but you need, you know, you need some pretty consistent help. Okay, level three is you can basically do it without help unless you're dealing with an edge, what I call an edge case, something out of the ordinary. Right, yeah, you know, most of the time, okay. It's a level four means you can teach somebody. Okay, so let's just use a couple examples. Um, let's look at Elena on, on topo drafting minus surfaces. So just topo drafting. Uh, where would we rank Elena? I'd say a four. She's probably a four. She could teach somebody how to do that, right? Okay. Um, Elena, where do you think you are on surfaces? Uh, three. I need minor assistance. Yeah, she's probably a three, right? She's a high two or, or a three. Yep. So she's darn good at her job. At, the, at that part of her job, yeah, she's she's good. Okay, where's uh, Austin on record of survey drafting? Four. He's, he's, he's probably a four, right? He can, he can do almost all that without a ton of help. Right, where's Michaela on that? One. She's a one, probably, right? So you guys understand how this works, right? I think I think you guys understand how it works. Okay, so that's that's what the one box one through four is. Okay, now if you look at the junior mapper job description, you'll notice. I don't know which one you guys printed. The type two type and two type three. three. Yeah, they're, oh, they're a little mixed up. They, 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 those are both type three. That's a typo on the other sheet. So type three. Okay, so <laughs> what we do is we take each job description and we break it into three levels. We call them types, T1 to T3. Okay, so when you, because here's what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to, okay, so let's say in a year, Elaine is ready to jump a tier. Okay, so she's going to jump up to, um, let's say, assistant land surveyor in a, in a year or two, okay? I don't want to, as soon as she makes that jump, slap her with the expectations for an assistant surveyor and she's just like way behind, right? So we, that's why we, we remember we're trying to do attainable. So we broke it into three parts. So like, all right, you're just starting out as an assistant surveyor. What do you need to know? Our, our, so the green boxes are our expectation for you at that job description and type. So now you'll notice, if you're type three junior mapper, where are most of the the dark green boxes? Or yeah, I expect you to be technically competent at most of that, right? Like you've mastered most of those things, okay? At a type three. Now, so that's reasonable, right? If, if you're at type three, you're almost ready to jump to the next level. So most of those boxes are gonna be fours, right? When you start out, at a type one, most of the boxes are one or two because you just started out there, right? Okay, now here's the neat trick. Remember how I told you there were $10 an hour bands? If you look at the career path, there's $10 an hour bands. But remember I told you you could, you could probably know within $3 an hour what somebody's making? Mm -hmm. Now you take the $10 band and you divide it by three. What does that give you? Type one, type two, type three. Now you know within about three bucks what somebody's probably making.
No what? Yeah. No guessing. Oof. Right? If, if somebody tells you, hey, I'm a solid T2 junior mapper, you're going to know about what, they can, what they're making within two or three bucks. So, like, I give myself a couple dollars an hour to play favorites, right? It's not very big. <laughs> and it actually has nothing to do with that. So that what do we look at? Well, you know, why is there, there's still a little bit of fuzziness there. So one of the things we look at is like, how far is somebody commuting, right? Um, you know, how easy are they to get along with at work? I mean, there's some, there is some subjectivity there. Some circumstances are different. Did we have to pay to pull them from another company? Did we have to steal them, right? Steal yeah, them. or did they come, did they come off the street? Yeah, that's something that we think about for sure, right? How risky was the move when they came on board? Okay, but that'll give you a rough idea. Okay, so here's why this is helpful. If you're currently an assistant surveyor, what should you be able to do with that type three job description for the level below you? To have all fours. Yeah, I mean, you better be able to check most of those as fours, right? So this gets back to we're trying to set expectations for you guys, right? And like, look, if, if, if you guys are looking at that and you think, Man, this is just totally unfair. These guys are just being unreasonable. Then you, we need to have a group discussion about that, right? We're trying to be fair, okay? But here's part of what... <clears throat> so you remember I told you my weakness as an employer is a failure to recognize your growth, right? Okay, do you know what the employee weakness is? And I know this because I've been an employee before. What's the employee weakness? You overestimate what you know. Yeah. So, so we're trying to correct... You guys see we're trying to correct both of those problems. Right? We're trying to make sure that, that, that the principals recognize your growth on a regular... How often are we taking a break to recognize your growth? Every month. Every month. Every month. Every month. Okay? But the flip side of that is we also want you guys to understand exactly what you need to know to be a well-rounded surveyor. Right? Is that a small basket? No. It's a big basket. I tell people all the time to pass your LSIT requires a huge breadth of knowledge. Ask Nick. You gotta know a lot of stuff to go in there and pass that I mean, test. Why do you study for that? Dude, thing? I studied so many different subjects with so many different like programs. And then I went to take the test, and none of what I studied was on the test. Yeah. Yeah. All the subjects were different. It's a hugely broad test. It's yeah. hugely broad. Okay. So <clears throat> I went to school for four years. So that's how that's how the job description works. Now, here's the other important thing. I didn't print it because I didn't want you guys, we didn't want to kill a bunch of trees today, but when you pull the job description for the assistant surveyor, which I, is ready, by the way, I just don't have the green boxes filled in yet, but it's it's there if you guys want to go look at it. Okay, now you have all the boxes that, that this job description has, and then there's additional boxes. Because as you moved up a level, now there's new things I expect you to know and learn. Right? So there's a new set of boxes. That makes sense, right? Because as you move up the career path, you're building on a core. So you said you got the assistant one without any boxes checked? Without any boxes. I'll yeah. print it out and check my boxes. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, Let's see where I am. Uh, all right, so that's how the job description works. Okay. Um, any questions? Now, okay, so this is important. Do you have to have all fours before we'll let you move up? No. No. Like, this is a general idea of what we expect, right? Let's just, like, you know, somebody like Elena or Austin may always be a little bit weak in the field knowledge, right? And we understand that. I'm not going to hold somebody back from that. I haven't touched the surface since I've been here. Okay, so, you know, like, look, you got if you got, you know, whatever, I don't know how many boxes there is there, but let's say you got three or four or five boxes where you're below expectation, we're not going to hold you back. Because you probably have maybe three or four boxes where you're above expectation, right? And so it'll balance out. Now, if somebody comes in there and every... Uh, they're they're one box below on every ticket. Are they ready for a bump? No, they are not ready for a bump yet. Okay. All right. So did I have you guys print out one of the specialization sheets or two of them? Yeah, flood hazard and program. Okay. So let's talk about that now that we're done with the core job description. Okay. So you remember in high school you had your core classes and then you got electives, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what we've done here. Okay, so the stuff that goes on the job description, the boxes, the check boxes, that's the core stuff. Okay, so but then what, what I don't want to do, so we've got the core that we expect you to learn. Okay, but then we want to allow you guys the opportunity to specialize a little bit. 
Okay, now go back, pull out your career path real quick. I just want to explain something. So you guys understand once you get once you get to the split there at level three, the 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 cores the, the core skills are going to look completely different after that, right? The land planner and the cartographer are going to have different core skills. Okay, but in addition to that specialization on that path, there, there there's these these um, electives that you can pick. Okay, specializations that you can pick. Okay, and here's why we're doing it. Here's why we're doing it the way we're doing it. Uh, do I need 14 people that that are experts at UAB photogrammetry? Nope. Mm -hmm. Do I need 14 people that are experts at LAFCO? Mm -hmm. Do I need 14 people that are experts at cat management? Mm -hmm. No, but I could use two people that are experts at flood hazard management, and I could use a couple people that are great at cat management, and I could use two or three people that are really good at UAB LIDAR. And so what we're trying to do is give you guys the opportunity to specialize. And here's the beautiful thing about this system is you can take a look at who has what specializations. We haven't done this yet, but we will. And then you can address company needs. You're like, hey, nobody, that's on the list. So we're going to have a list of specializations. And then we're going to track who has achieved technical competence at what specializations. And if you look at the list and say, hey, nobody has done cab management or nobody's done uh, LACO, then you can pick specializations that will help address weak points in the company's team, right? What does that do to your value? It increases your value. It increases your value to me, right? Because like, let's just say you're the one person in here that knows zoning and LAFCO, and you come in with an alternative job offer. What position does that put me in? Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, now I'm going to have to negotiate really hard because I don't want to lose that critical skill set, right? So it's a really, it's a really beautiful thing for you. Now, so like real quick, real yep. quick, like that same logic would apply to once Hunter and I become licensed because of the shortage of surveyor licenses in California, uh, you, know, you may very goal, well right? see a lot of job offers from a lot of different places. Yeah. And so here's what I got. So look at the band, look at the band for the, the bar right below the, um, right above the, the blue horizontal bar. Look at that band. What's the wage rate there? 40 to 50. Okay, that's what I feel like is a relatively competitive salary for a brand new LS. Okay, now here's what you gotta ask yourself if you're a brand new LS. Rick Mummert will give you a job as a brand new LS. And he'll probably pay you more than I will. Well, what's that work environment like? Well, here, what's he gonna want you to do for that money? Mm -hmm. yeah. And are you ready for it? Nope. So here's what you got to be careful of. Like, look, when I got, I was at my first place three, four years licensed before I left, right? And I'm super glad I did that because was I ready to stamp my own stuff when I passed that test? Probably not. Probably not. Okay. So, you know, you got to weigh that out. Now, um, I'll just tell you that right now, I mean, I see job offers all the time for 120K. So somebody get the calculator out, take $120,000 divided by 2080. What's that wage? 60 bucks an hour. It's yeah. basically you take yeah, whatever yeah, your right. wages and multiply okay. by two. So years. sixty bucks an hour. Now that's significantly higher than that bracket right before the bar, right? Okay, and I told you we like to pay ten to twenty percent above market. Okay, but what does it cost to buy a three bedroom house in Orange County? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's relative. So you got to weigh that out, right? You got to weigh that out. <clears throat> I don't think you can find a job in the valley for one hundred twenty grand. A year as a brand new surveyor. Yeah, yeah. it's Bay Area wage. If you find that job, what I want you to do? Let's tell you. Bring it to me, and then we'll talk about it, right? But, okay, so I got a five minute commute tough, so you got to weigh that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so look at the career path. Okay, remember I told you the black box has the number of specializations, mm -hmm. right? So by the time you get to Seven. the level above. Uh, the, by the time you get to be an assistant land surveyor, you know, you should be specialized in seven or nine things. Now, I think some of you guys are already there and we just haven't documented that yet, right? Um, so, you know, Hunter's got his UAV pilot cert and he's, he's got some time in PIX4D. He probably can check the box on most of that photogrammetry specialization, right? I know how to eat a firm, but I don't know anything about identifying errors in firms. Okay, so... Which that, I thought that was actually really interesting. That's the whole point of the exercise, right? Is to... is to. Um, so we're going to be working on this. One of the things on my list the next week or two is to, to get the list of specializations put together. 
Um, and so then, then you guys can, you know, choose what you want to do. And we can, again, this, once you've cho chosen your specializations, you're going to know what you got to work on. Oh, and I erased it. That goes into your professional development plan, right? Which should be a page or two. Okay. But if this sounds overwhelming, I want you to stop and think about this for a minute. So I'm down at the bottom, right? How many specializations on the bottom? It Eight. says 10, but I, I'm just going to assume. It said, said 10 to 15? It just says 10. Just says 10? Okay, so let's just, let's just count some things real quick. Okay, I'm gonna use myself as an example because remember, I, I, this could be overwhelming, but it's really not. Okay, so I've got my sea feds. Okay, I've got my UAV pilot cert. Okay, uh, who's the best guy in here? Title surveys, probably. Yeah. Uh, who's probably the only guy we got in here that's good at reading zoning? Yeah. Who's the only guy we got in here that probably knows anything about CEQA? I don't know what that <laughs> is. Okay. Uh, you know, I could probably check every box on the FEMA, on the flood stuff. Right? How do I do a CAD, Elena? Pretty good. I'm not, I'm a ha I'm not a half bad CAD manager. Right? Uh, let's what see. What do you know about lap code? Yeah, I could do a LAFCO annexation. I understand how LAFCO works. How about, uh, who do we got in here that can brief a case? You. Okay, so common law. All right, I need one more. Uh, who do we have that can do expert witness work? Me. You've done expert witness work? Oh, I could. I mean, I won't win. But. <laughs> okay, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. What am I trying to demonstrate? By the time you're licensed. By the time you've been licensed for how many years of experience is that? 12, 12 to 16. By the time you've been licensed for 12 to 16 years, how hard is it to get 10 specializations? It's not. Not that hard. Now, you guys will each have a set of 10, but they'll be different than my 10, right? So Brian's 10 are not my 10. Hey, what do I know about UAV LiDAR? Only what Brian has taught me. <laughs> okay, right? So uh, I'm scared to even touch his UAV that flies LiDAR, right? And I, I also no longer know how to use the photogrammetry software we have in house because Brian switched us and right so that's like yeah that's something I need to work on okay so that's the goal is to get you guys you know after we get you well rounded then then you get to pick some stuff that you want to specialize in and we'll work with you the principals will work with you to do that to so that you can check the stuff like so part of what <clears throat> Okay, there's two other things we got to talk about. Everybody understands specializations, basically? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 